All right, everybody just calm down. We'll keep the lights down low so you can kind of see the surface quality here. Today we added uh, our first layer after tape, which has got some trowel marks, some takeoff, some lift, some start. But overall, the point is to kind of get the geometry right. Um, we've got to get from this surface back to that surface and back up to this surface again. And this, despite being when we're finished, we want it to look straight. And we don't want it against the baseboard, which is technically pretty straight, even though you can get a big arc out of it. We don't want it to wander down there at the floor, uh, most, most of all. If we're going to stick to natural wood baseboard, we haven't even got the choice to caulk that which we do when we have a white baseboard, so we want to do our best work in case somebody um, you know, wants to move to a natural wood finish down the road. Same with a white ceiling versus the wall color. We want that line to kind of whew, like a laser through there, so we're going to be really careful of that. Um, but again, basically filling. It shouldn't be a big transition. Uh, it's hard to say, see, because we shimmed down the drywall to get as close as we could to the, to the existing surface, but ultimately we don't want to be there or any lower than that because then our then our fill is going on the high side so we wanted to still fill on the low side which is an ideal scenario so most of our mud today was on the new drywall side of the joint and just rolls up onto the higher existing board finish and we had that wonky area here uh, that had to be you know it got a lot of fill and you can see here with the gloss and uh, we don't want to see tape in here anymore either so when we tape it originally we can see the tape lines and when we're done with our first coat of mud, I don't want to see any tape through it uh, because when we do a light sand, we don't want to pull up that surface of the tape. See, here's an example of seeing tape through it. Like I said, I didn't want to see. Um, those will be the first places I touch up when I come back. We don't want that fuzzy tape showing up. And we did one side of the inside corner transitions from wall to ceiling. So we did the, the wall side of all of them, and we'll need to do the ceiling side next when we come back. So the wall side is done here, ceiling's undone. Same here, wall side of this and the ceiling's undone. And then we put our outside corners on. We got that one last time, so we filled it. Um, we put them on and lightly filled either side of this one and this one here. And it's just sort of a waiting game. You can't overhandle it. Here's an example of overhandling. Um, I'll turn the light on so you can see. I just saw something, and it's why when I showed you this and noticed it, I didn't grab a knife and try and fix it, because I just saw something here a moment ago and tried to fix it. Uh, can you see that? That's what you get for overhandling it. Uh, it's been here a bit and it dried and I wanted to just pull through it one more time and fix something and I made it 10 or 25 times worse than it was. So we're going to call it now, which is the wise thing to do. Um, and we're pretty pleased. And by we, I mean I. And I'm sure the customer's feeling good about it. This part can drag on a little because I can't be here all day. I can only do so much and then, like I say, I can't overhandle it. I can't work on top of my existing... Um, Here's another little area that we added in another layer or two. <clears throat> so, next time before I put any wet mud on here when it's completely dry tomorrow. Oh, screw hole, what in the heck? What in the heck? Forgot that one. Anyway, those are the things you want to catch, you know, next time. I was about to say, you want to come in here, everything's dry, and you can basically sand for the majority of the time. Um, just to take high points off, scraping the little ridges and stuff like that off, all to start with. Um, and you don't want anything wet when you're doing that. So then when I'm done with this, the cursory sand, next time I'll get that screw hole, I'll get a couple areas that I can see tape, and then we'll do one more um, pass on everything with ultralight. Everything up until now has been uh, multi-purpose or all-purpose mud. Uh, where is it? Not ultralight, maybe it's just plus three. Anyway, <clears throat> dust control. Uh, it is a little lighter. It's not ultra light, but uh, we'll probably use dust control because the, the cursory sand I'm talking about is just to take high ridges off and and we're not going to go over all the square footage. So we'll, a light sand of the multi-purpose, then we're going to do a, a full layer of uh, a dust control or an ultra light because then when we come back we will be trying to lightly sand the entire surface area of everything except for the raw drywall and we don't want to have a heavy um, relatively hard mud to sand. We wanted to make it easy on ourselves. And if it's nice if the dust falls straight down to the floor and doesn't just make a cloud. So uh, that's what we'll be using then. And that'll put us at Tuesday uh, and then come back Wednesday 
And then th Thursday's Thanksgiving, so we're off Thursday, Friday. But we're going to be in good shape next week. Week after Thanksgiving, we'll be talking about probably getting some primer on everything and, and seeing how everything looks. So after primer, there might be one or two spots that needs to be touched up with a little spackle or a little ultralight just to make it perfect. So, looking good. Wouldn't you agree? Wouldn't you agree? Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Okay, thanks for watching. We'll see you.